Another boss line dormant in the realm of Varexis. Not Umbra, but the Golem. If you already watched my Umbra guide, you already know my opinion that she sucks so hard. Grow up. However, even though the Golem is in level and stats weaker than a Draconic Umbra, it is by no means an easier meal. In fact, the Golem is usually retarded, I mean, sorry, regarded as one of the more complex bosses in the game, and a single skill no. issue could end you instantly. To find the Golem, you must first go west of the Varexis spawn, and from the cross junction, go further southwest. There, you will find the entrance to the Temple of Varexis, home to the Golemite Fiends and the Chonky Golem Boy. The Golem spawns in a squarish arena at the far end of the temple. So the Golem, unlike Umbra, drops Saving Grace and Lollipops as well. However, the Golem is actually much more efficient at dropping these, largely due to its support surprisingly low max HP, making a turnover rate of farming this boss much higher. In fact, the Golem is currently the reigning champion to farming lollipops right now, even better than Umbra and Nidorex. But aside from these, the Golem also drops all of the Golemite materials, that is the Golemite artifact, slab, shard, eye, and orb. These are mainly used to craft the Golemite warrior set pieces, not the goddamn Golemite stuff. Please, don't do it, don't do it, no. And I mean, also the Golem mini exists, so I guess. Now, in terms of your stats, the Golem fight is largely doable with most gear sets. For majors, you want minimally a night spawn set with full spell power and should be okay. And as for warriors, you want minimally the glacial set with at least 100 total accuracy across all of your gears and stat points. Now moving on to your prep, this fight is generally really easy if you have incredibly powerful gear like the Turmoil set. In this case, the golem usually simply falls apart before he can even use a single ability on you. However, if you are weaker, you will be subject to a lot more RNG and therefore have more chances to die. And that's where I save your ass in this video. So bring saving graces if you have those, otherwise just hope the golem drops them more often than you can skill issue. But don't worry, like I said, I'm gonna guide you on this. Now let's quickly summarize all of the golem's attacks. There are only two, but both have insta-kill mechanics built into them, so you cannot outgear this fight and think you'll be 100% safe. So the first attack is an AoE ground pound. You know the golem is charging this skill when you see this warning text. The golem is charging up a powerful attack. This ability charges for 4 seconds and hits for more damage the closer you are to the golem. If you are beneath the golem's nuts, I mean if you are nuts and are beneath the golem, then you would die instantly from this attack. This is pure skill issue as the golem will not proactively teabag you during the fight. But the further you are from the golem, the less damage you actually receive. So that's pretty cool. Now the second attack is the one most players have trouble with. When the warning sign comes on, the golem is going to shatter the ceiling, get to the safe zone. You gotta act fast. You have 7 seconds to find a green mark location on the ground, which may be anywhere within the entire arena, including the edges and corners. If you do not get into this safe zone on time, then your mother will not be so proud of you. Actually, your mother would probably miss you. Now those were the golem's attacks, but here are some incredibly useful tips to help you endure this fight. So when a golem charges his ground pound attack, just stay at arm's length or further as a mage and you'd be fine. You'll be totally okay. You won't die. As for his second attack, this one is a little tricky and you need to practice a lot to get used to it. The idea is to always start at a safe spot where you can see a single corner of the arena at the edge of your game screen. This gives you the widest view range and you don't waste your visibility on walls instead. And when the boss starts smashing the ceiling, quickly glance around the screen for the safe zone, especially behind your player dashboard where it might be a little bit difficult to notice immediately. If the safe zone is not around you, then you have about 5-6 to six seconds left on the timer. I recommend walking in a circle to look for the safe zone and you should have more than enough time to reach it by then. You can also absolutely pay to win and get membership which grants you access to the PC client that allows for extended vision. Yes, that is actually a thing. So I guess you can technically pay to win in PvE games. But do also note that the entire sprite needs to be snuck inside the safe zone or you will still insta death or insta die. English is hard. Now, a final tip for you is to take time between the golem kills to hunt the golemite fins around. This is really important, by the way. So the golem has a 60 second respawn timer, so find what works best for you and return to the spawn point when the boss is just about to respawn. This allows you to make the most of your time here and get as many slaps and shots as possible. So that is basically the gist of this fight, but before we take a look at a full uncut run, let's take a look at what an hour of golem kills looks like. Yup, and that's an hour of golem kills, but ignoring the 4 lollies that I had before this run began, we got 1 orb, 2 slaps, 8 lollies, easy 21 mil. So this is the golem, let's take a look at a full uncut run. So that's it for this video, I hope this video helped you in any way. If you did, don't forget to a thumbs up, it really helps the channel, and subscribe for more Curse of Arrows content. Now with that said, this has been Derry Free to Play, and as always, I will see you in the next video.